On this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. CPC, a new study looks at rising click costs. TikTok really nails its latest test. And we're breaking down every single update that was announced for Google's responsive search ads. All on today's show. Welcome, you are listening to Welcome. Marketing O'Clock. Just stay tuned. Digital marketing news, but let's get specific. Digital ads, SEO, and analytics, social media, and more. Yeah. Pretty much everything that'll make your website perform. With new shows every Friday. Every Friday. We give you the news with sass and puns and definitely high takes. Thank you for tuning in. Hey. Hey. You know what time it is. What time is it? It's officially marketing o'clock. Settle in, sit back, keep it locked. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shop. I'm Jess Bud. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially marketing o'clock. Here on February 2nd, 2024. Hello, everybody. We made it to February. Woohoo! All right, and before we get into the digital marketing news of the week, Shep, what's going on in your life? Major life update. You are looking at the owner of a minivan. No, you don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I purposely out went there? out of my way not to figure out what kind of car you have. Seriously? You couldn't yeah. guess? You didn't see it out in the parking lot? It's beautiful. I didn't look. Oof. I'm like, I didn't see it. 2021 Kia Sedona. Wow. I'm going there in like a few weeks. Sedona, Arizona? No, it's a Kia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sedona. <laughs> So, it's really nice. I'm never going back. So your minivan 4L. Yes. Okay. Why isn't everyone driving one of these? That was my first car. It was what's, a minivan. What's the biggest change to your life? The, the biggest impact being a minivan mom. Has the been. space. Okay. The button doors. Ooh. How about this? It turns down the volume on your Taylor Swift music when you're in reverse. How? What is more mom than that? Did you get like the Taylor Swift upgrade? <laughs> like the, <laughs> the muted? Um, rock, you're probably rocking out to a hard mom. Mm -hmm. Listen to Taylor Swift. If Taylor Swift is playing, then turn down the volume. No, like I think one. it's for all music, but I haven't tested any other artists. Shocking. Yet. You Shocking. only reversed Taylor. <laughs> you only listen to Taylor Swift. But it's like really nice. That is a good safety feature. I like it. I'm just leaning into it. I, I was think born it, to drive a minivan. Yeah. I feel like it suits you. It really does. What color does. did you get? Black. Okay. Which That's one? Nice. It was just the one. You know, they don't make a lot of minivans anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Who and, knows why? People are missing out, but they're hard to find. There's a little thing called supply and demand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the demand is a little bit lacking. That's because everyone's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, black minivans, they, they, they do look, I feel like, less... Uh, minivan -y. Yeah. They're a little sleeker. Okay. Yeah. I would have taken any color. There you go. I'm really excited about it. So if you see me on the streets, just give a wave, give a little honk. Thanks. What's new with you, Greg? Well, I'm on a crusade against maybe the most popular thing on the planet right now. Taylor Swift? No. No, not Taylor Swift. Stanley water bottles. Oh, <gasps> you just made me put mine under the table. Is that a... Yeah. I am not on a crusade against that one. Okay. I'm on a crusade against those water bottles that people have with the straw that comes up out of the top. I don't understand why that's a thing. Personally, I don't want to drink out of a gross straw that you got to get a pipe cleaner or something to get in there and clean it out. But that's besides the point. I coach uh, some sports teams and you people have to bring water to practice. A lot of times you play on turf. You don't have a huge amount on the sideline. These things fall over and everybody's butts get wet. Nobody has water. I'm like, this is not an athletic thing you can bring. Yeah. I understand it looks cool. I understand people are fighting to get into a target to get a bright pink one, but it is not something that is suitable for athletes. They're supposed to be for like the moms in the minivan, I not know, the athletes so for cool. you. It's like, no, don't. This is not for sports. So they need the model I have with the screw off cap. Yes, I don't have a problem with that because you can yeah. just turn it on and off. Um, and so that's what my life has become is, is like water bottles need to be able to be held upside down without water leaking out of them. Tell your team. Also, you have to be careful with travel because I've seen someone put a bag in the overhead bin and a Stanley water bottle fell on someone's head. Ooh. And I'm sure there was a lawsuit. Probably got wet in there too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's me. I'm just on my crusade <laughs> against Stanley or, or any straw. Straw. Because they're not water bottles. It was the straw that the broke problem is your everybody's back. like, Yeah, it was the straw. <laughs> everybody's like, it's a standing water. No, that is not a water bottle. That's a cup with a straw and a cap. It's not the same thing as an athletic water bottle. These are serious first world problems. This is what I'm spending my life on. Though. I'm like, <laughs> so anyway, 
Kids can't play with wet butts, though. I mean, that that's valid. They're <laughs> spilling unnecessary. And before we get to this week's news, we want to let you know that this week's show is brought to you by Wix. Let's talk about the new SEO Resource Center on Wix.com, please. It is packed with material created by top SEOs in the game. These resources can be customized for specific tasks and shared with teammates and clients for more effective collaboration. So you can download checklists, templates, and toolkits to develop smoother SEO processes and ramp up productivity for any project. So they have technical resources, There's a backlink tracking template, an SEO site audit template, or a keyword performance tracker, but they also have sales resources in there. So they have an SEO agency project proposal, a template for client retention checklist. There's just all facets of SEO. It's in there. They're all downloadable, completely free. So you do not want to miss out on these fabulous resources. Check out the Wix Resource Center and the Wix SEO Learning Hub. Wix.com, Wix.com, Wix.com slash SEO slash learn slash assets. Or we have links in our description newsletter on our website. Pick your poison and check it out, as some would say. We have some exciting updates from Google Ads, specifically for responsive search ads. Making headlines, if you will. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the first one isn't that exciting because we actually broke this news. It was spotted in the wild by Jessica Budd or no? You heard I didn't about spot it from it. someone I reported else. on it. I don't spot anything in the wild. Yeah, but this is campaign level headlines description. So you can associate up to three headlines and two descriptions at the campaign level and they'll be eligible to show in every responsive search ad in your campaign. And this will respect pinning. So if you pin something to position one in your ad, your campaign level headline is not going to override that. Totally optional. You do not have to have these set up, but I have no complaints here. It seems like a really great resource for advertisers, and even better, the start and end dates. That's my favorite part. Love that. So you have some kind of promotion. You can have it end on a certain date. So when would you use this? Do you have any like actual real life scenarios? I think, like I said, if there's some kind of a promotion that you want to call out or like a new value proposition for your brand, if you have like, you know, a lot of big names up there talking about messaging and you just want to test something across all your campaigns, try a new headline and pin it and you don't have to add it to all of your RSAs. Or I can see myself using it more as I'm setting up new accounts and campaigns. Like if there's a headline or description, I don't want to put it in every single ad as I'm making it. I can just put it across everything. Yeah. That's where I see it more for setting up fresh ads. But either yeah. way, I love it. And I think if you segment everything really well, this is going to be a benefit where you can just be like, okay, this is talking about this specific, you know, whatever software solution and it was rated number whatever and you just don't have to put it in each one and you can put it in there and it'll go across all all the ad groups in there in yeah. that campaign and if you have a million headline ideas and you want more than 15 you can have some that you're three at the campaign level and still you're 15 in your ad so that's nice too but of course only three you're gonna show or one and if you don't like it you don't have to use it. right very nice <laughs> Okay, next update here is what they're calling performance-based dynamic asset eligibility. So this is assets as in formerly called automated extensions. Think of it as that. So at the account level. And I always turn these off, so this is kind of news for me. But before, if you had automatically created assets at the account level, they would only serve if there were no assets at that campaign or ad group level for a certain ad or ad group. But now, dynamic image assets, dynamic site links, dynamic callouts, and dynamic structured snippets can show alongside or in place of your manually created assets of the same type. And very important to note here, if you are opted out, you are still opted out and you still have the ability to opt out. So if you are opted out of dynamic assets, they will not show. Yes, and just a little plug, we just made a tutorial about this on our YouTube channel. So if you're not sure if you're opted out, youtube.marketingaclock.com. But again, I don't think this is a huge, I don't think this is going to ruffle too many feathers. If you don't want to opt out, why not have them show alongside your manual ones? Whatever. Turn it on if you want. Don't use it if you don't want. Yeah. Final change here. I think this is the biggest one besides the campaign level headlines and descriptions, but we already knew that. Performance-based single headlines is what they're calling this. So RSAs will be eligible to show with one headline 
when it's, quote, predicted to improve performance. And when this happens, headline text can also show at the beginning of the ad's description. So a little behind the scenes here, me and Greg had like a little heads up to this and we talked to Google about it last week. But they said that that first headline that's going to show is supposed to be like the best performing headline. Mm -hmm. And then the headline that would show at the beginning of your description would kind of be like the second best. And I've seen this a lot in the SERPs and I don't hate the look of it at all. I don't either. Like I think they're making smart choices about that headline that they're putting at the beginning of the description text and it makes sense in context of the ad from what I've seen. Go ahead and Google something right now because I'm seeing this like everywhere Yes, on I desktop. Too. I'm surprised more people haven't picked up on it ahead of time. But the top performing headline is the headline and then what would have been the second one usually divided by that pipe just gets plopped down into the description and has a dash in the middle of it yeah so and top performing is kind of a case-by-case -case basis like it's not going to be the same headline for every search and every user that sees it right that's right. not the perception i got but it's supposed to be a high performing headline that they think is going to convert yeah and i personally i'm just like I'm so over RSAs in general. You look at the everything, everything looks the exact same. You can see there's like one little message and another little message. And a lot of, I know I, I talk about it all the time, but a lot of the creativity that you used to be able to have and the ability to customize everything isn't there anymore. And so at least now you've got one awesome headline that's going to be what shows yeah. up if it thinks it's going to have more performance and the other thing's going to be put to the bottom. And it again respects pinning. So if you pin something the headline position one, that would be what shows as a single headline. And I think it's the ad stand out more. I feel like that's why they're doing it. I do too. So you could see an increase, increased click-through rate. We'll have to see. But those are the changes. Let us know what you think, everyone. Yeah, and for the single headline RSA too, I think they're like more than ever now. You want to really get granular with your ad groups. You want to make sure that, that those headlines you have in there are super aligned with your yeah. terms. And then you can put all your more generic ones at the campaign level. Hey, <laughs> what else is happening? Okay, from Search Engine Land and Nicola Agus here, we have some news on Google CPCs. Google Search CPCs are up 19%, and that has pushed the ad spend up 17%, and CPCs are up 19%. This comes from research done by Tenuity. Um, I bet Andrea just did this whole thing or something, or, or Brett. Maybe they saying? did it together. Probably together. Um, and so some of the details say that m the mobile search ads spend was up 19% year over year, clicks were up 10%, and CPC was only up 9%. Desktop was a big increase in CPCs, up 13%, and the spend was up 15% year over year. And then tablet was the one with the highest increase in CPC cost, it was up 19%, while spend was only up 4% year over year. CPCs are up, pushing ad spend up. Strange. Not a surprise to anyone yeah. who listens to this show. It's almost like if you had an ad network and you were able to just control the bids <laughs> and control how competitive you're going to be with your competitors, and raise that level of competition, almost like bits are going to go up. Very surprising. Who would have called that? <laughs> <clears throat> Me. <clears throat> Jerry. <laughs> okay, and then one more or two more things that I thought were interesting from the survey is 91% of retail advertisers uh, that were running shopping ads also included performance max campaigns and their strategy during shopping season. So that's a pretty big uh, percentage there. And then Timu had some retailers spooked as well. In the final week of 2023, 90% of retailers recognized Timu as a top competitor in Google Shopping auctions, a level that matches Amazon's consistent presence over the last two years. So, y'all ever bought anything from Timu yet? No. No. I have like an order on the way. Shipping's really slow? Very slow. Hmm. I, I can't live that way. No. No. But, they're just things you don't want to like. I'm like, I need extra shin guards. Don't like, you need them now? No. I already have extras, but people just take my extras. So I'm like, probably like once a month team order. You should just order a bunch of water bottles with no straws. I should do that. I bet yeah. you can get some cheap ones. Yeah. They'll probably. be here in four years. But. 
Yeah, although those might actually leak worse. <laughs> <laughs> Valid point. All right, what's up with you, Jess? All right. Well, if you would rather shop somewhere new, uh, big news for TikTok. This is by way of Glenn Gabe. He posted on X, confirmed by TikTok. TikTok is testing a feature that could make all posts shoppable by identifying objects and videos and prompting users to find similar items on TikTok shop. He goes on to say, previously only approved influencers and brands could tag products when they posted content in the app. But then reading through the article, it's not this version of this. Like regular folks aren't going to go and tag products. That's not what this is. Um, TikTok is going to be using technology to identify objects in a video automatically and then try and get folks to click through to those products and shop or similar products. Um so if you're selling on TikTok shop, this could be huge if the products are properly identified. More on that in a minute. But I can imagine this is going to kind of change the dynamic of how people are even using the platform. First of all, if you're not compensated for the sales when yeah. you're just like posting something, I can imagine people are going to be my mad. my biggest question. Yeah. And also just I, not like they're not ads, but it's going to feel like everything is an ad. I don't know if people are going to want to just like watch a video and then you got like a t-shirt in the background and I can also buy a green t-shirt like that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I used Sophie the giraffe as a microphone in a recent video. <laughs> that would have been an giraffe, excellent right? opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Everybody wants that. That would make sense. Have you gone viral again yet? <laughs> what, nothing like the first time, but you know, 10,000 here and there. Oh. Sharing a teething giraffe, you might get, get viral. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so it's still a test. I'm sure if they go wide with this, it will improve. But as far as if things are matching, um, Bloomberg, the story's from Bloomberg, and they said that, um, for example, it's not it's not always a perfect match. For example, a video reviewed by Bloomberg from a woman who polishes stones. Polishes stones? Polishes stones. Served up a gold <laughs> ring and two sets of metallic press-on fingernails <laughs> tagged with similar items. So again, Barely even adjacent. Can you reread that sentence? For example, a video reviewed by Bloomberg from a woman who polishes stones served up a gold ring and two sets of metallic press-on fingernails. But we don't know if she's getting money. So she's polishing she's, some stones. She's polishing stones. And people are looking at her fingers while she's stone polishing. Yeah. And they're they're saying, I like the way you have clip-on nails. Maybe. Well, it's like on That's the queue. TikTok is Those saying. ladies have immaculate manicures, the jewelry people, all the time. Mm. Do they have a, a stone polishing show? No, but my three-year-old does. <laughs> She's got a rock tumbler. <laughs> so does my dad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know. We'll see how this evolves. It's, it's cool, I guess, if it works, but I don't know if people are going to be super happy with it if it's everywhere. Not if they're not giving people money. That, I think, that, is going to yeah. make people mad. Now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. This week's Take of the Week comes from the one and only Gil Gildner at Gil Gildner on X. And Gil says, this is an example of Google auto recommendations not being what's ideal for the client. And he has a screenshot of the current budget of $450, and there is a recommended increase in daily budget spend of up uh, $40 to 490. Uh, the weekly conversion value that he will get from this is plus $192. The weekly cost will be plus $265. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> but I think this is, like, it always comes down to me, and I've heard other people say this before, you're either, like, stupid or you're a liar. <laughs> is Google this bad? Yeah. Is their AI this bad? Then how do we trust Gemini and how do we trust all these different things? Or are you just saying, this is your recommended budget because we make more money and we're stupid? The best is when or they give you – recommendations like that and they don't say anything about conversion value and it's just like you'll get this many more clicks do yeah. it gee thanks <laughs> but the sad thing is people are going to say oh i have this giant red flag yeah. in my campaign my client sees this we're limited by budget okay we can increase it 40 dollars. that's the recommendation let's go well i'm sorry if you do that you then are going to be out 73 dollars <laughs> you're going to be you're going to lose 73 dollars a week yeah that's bad math that is not good. 
Mm-mm. Why would you recommend that? So um, Gil f- uh, follows up and says, it will actually, um, actually decreasing the budget will be a better call because if you look at the um, example below the current, if you're on YouTube, you can see by spending $552 less, um, or they will lose $552 if they go down one. Um, and their weekly cost will be minus 630. So the actual best choice isn't to stay current. It's not to go recommended. It's to go and actually spend less. But that's clearly not the recommended budget. Or like, Never like a would simple be math either. Problem. Yeah. Like, which CPL is the best? Hmm. Whatever. Um, so thank you, Gil. Great follow on X. Now it's time for this week's ICYMI. ICYMI people, this is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. I see why my people, Barry Schwartz had an article for Search Engine Land this week about how on March 12th, Google will replace first input delay or FID with interaction to next paint, INP as a core web vital metric. This is coming from a non-SEO girly, just reporting the news. Doing great. <laughs> Sounds like personality type. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she's a real NIP. <laughs> INP. So Glenn Gabe retweeted this and added some context. He said, once again, if you have a big performance problem, fix it. But do not obsess over core web vitals for SEO, including the newest metric, which is INP. You can view INP scores for your site in Google Search Console now. So he says an INP below or at 200 milliseconds means your page has a good responsive list responsiveness, an IMP above 200 milliseconds and below or at 500 milliseconds means your page's responsiveness needs improvement, and an IMP above 500 milliseconds means your page has poor responsiveness. So those guidelines are already there, and you can take a look and see where your site stacks up, but I would take Glenn Gabe's advice. He always knows what to do. Not only that, but always take Glenn's advice, especially if he has full caps in that advice. Oh, right? Where do he is not, a disclaimer. Do not. Once yeah. again, if you have a performance problem, big performance problem, fix it. But all caps, do not obsess. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for this week's Pew Pew Lightning Round. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. First up in the paid universe this week, Meta is expanding their automated audience targeting options. Meta's advantage detailed targeting is now available for all campaign objectives after the phasing out of ad targeting categories. And this leverages AI and machine learning technology to identify a broader range of high valuable customers for your campaigns than the initial specified audience group. So they're taking away a lot of those manual targeting options. We've been reporting on it over the past few months and they're giving this new AI option as an alternative. If you want to use this, you will need developer help, and developers have until April 22nd to complete the implementation of these code changes. So I would need developer help. Next up, an update from Alphabet's latest earnings call. Alphabet shares slid more than 6% in extended trading on Tuesday after the company reported ad revenue that missed estimates. So for earnings per share, they came in at $1.64 versus an expected $1.59. Revenue came in at $86.31 billion versus an expected $85.33 billion. YouTube ads came in a little bit over the expectation, $9.2 billion versus $9.21. And then traffic acquisition costs were only at $13.9 billion versus an expected $14.1. With the recent push on YouTube lately, I did not think they were going to miss their target. Yeah. I feel like they have really ratcheted those ads up. Surprisingly, maybe not, Microsoft search and news advertising revenue was up 8%. This is the first time Microsoft has reported its quarterly earnings as a $3 trillion company and included revenue from Activation Blizzard. So there must be a lot of people with that Um audience network expanded for search turned on getting a lot of clicks there but i did get it turned off for that one account great work very exciting and it took like two (laughs) seconds at the end of the day so annoying like i had to beg and plead for months and then it takes them like flip of a switch it seems like 
Next up from Anthony Higman. Higman. <laughs> That's a bit delayed. Wow. <laughs> Google is testing adding highly rated callouts to the local service ad section in certain verticals. He has a screenshot here for another attorney ad, and it says highly rated malpractice lawyer right there in the SERPs. From Adrian Decker at Adrian underscore PPC on X, he spotted new icons in Google ads when you're setting up your campaign like not copying and pasting, but just in the platform, setting it up from scratch. They have these little icons that correspond to the network's where your placements could appear. I think this is pretty cool, but I'm just saying like the Google search network one just has Google search logo on it. So maybe they should not make search partners the automatic setting or you know, encourage display expansion because it doesn't show display on here. Just saying, but this is cool. So Pmax says everything. Google search just says Google. Display just has display. I like it. Next up, there's an article from Search Engine Land that says three quarters of leading brands in the U.S. and U.K. reportedly fall victim to identity theft in Google search ads as the result of scammers bidding on brand names and using the brand's domain in ad copy. This is something that we've heard about before. They have an example for Skyscanner. It says skyscanner.com right there in the URL, like in the ad. But it's not an ad for Skyscanner. So someone mm -hmm. would click on it and it would go to some weird website and whatever. Nightmare. And then it says, quote, making matters worse, the targeted brand, due to Google's policy of serving just one ad per domain, the legitimate brand's ads is excluded from the search results when these scammers manage to secure an ad spot. Yeah, that does make matters worse. Like that wow. is a big problem. And to make matters even more worse, when that sky scanner is trying to find support, nobody's going to respond to them. Mm. Better fork over 50 bucks. More like sky spammer. What if Ooh. it just said that right in the URL? Should. Should. Like, this is a big problem. Then they also talk about affiliate scams. So it says affiliate hijacking was found to be more prevalent than fraud, affecting 75% of the sites in the study. That is pretty terrible. Like, that, all the problems with support and, like, bogus policy violations, and then there's real problems out there all the time for people, and they're just doing a terrible job. Figure it out, Google. Next up from Boris Beckerick, he spotted a new recommendation in Google Ads for unpausing an ad group. Let us know when you see one for pausing an ad group, Boris. <laughs> and remember, if you ever hit apply all, <laughs> you <Don't>. are... Don't. <laughs> I, I still cannot believe. Like, you have to double confirm things yeah. when you change like a budget pretty like up a, a bunch or lower it that apply all must be doing it's just so for people who are like quitting jobs on their way out the door <laughs> <laughs> like, i'll unpause the that ad group <laughs> <laughs> yeah. bye suckers oh, terrible it's, i've actually had this is random i've had a big problem with microsoft lately when i'm adjusting budgets like i'll be typing and it's not like it's unsynced or something, it and there's an seen. extra zero in there. Oh. And I hit save. And like, I have to go back and undo it. Like, always wait to see the budget after you hit save in Microsoft. It's very buggy. The, there was one, I went to make $100 yesterday, and all of a sudden it was 10000 Be careful. And it didn't stop you? No. Mm. Not good. Finally, here from Thomas Assel on X new solutions menu under bulk action spotted. So this is something that we talked about recently. These solutions are kind of like scripts and you can kind of think of them as acting in the same way, but they hadn't been spotted in the account yet. And at the time, I think we were worried that scripts were going away and this was like a replacement, but that's not what's happening. It seems like it's just kind of a script that you don't have to build. Like they're using commonly found scripts and making them for you so anyone can use them. And I definitely recommend checking them out. So I have to pull Jess Bud here because this is really small. Um, it says right in the top, powered by ad, app script, and you can click on it to learn more about it. But some solutions, examples are an account summary that's going to be into a, uh, exported into a Google Sheet, an ad performance Google Sheet, an account anomaly detector, a link checker, flexible budgets. It'll raise your budget for you when it wants to. I don't know about that one. And a common negative list that simplifies management of negative criteria. So this seems like a cool thing that everyone should look at and see if they want to use any. I, I wouldn't use that it budget one. From right here. Yeah. Without moving my computer. You can. I can. Wow. Even the small print. I guess I need to go to the optometrist. I've been eating more carrots. <laughs> What's happening in organic? 
All right, first up in organic, we have an ad read from Wix.com, and they asked to find one resource that was useful in the SEO Learning Hub, and I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Couldn't do it. There is just too much. There's too much. You simply could not choose. One. I could not. I couldn't. Easy I kept to going find. back and forth, yeah. and I'm like, well, one thing they've got going is a webinar with Menachem Ani, Dwayne Brown. George Wynn, Crystal Carter, and they're talking about automation and AI into your sales funnel, which I think is a, a, the automation standpoint. Too many people just overlook the stuff. They just look at Core Web Vitals and they freak out. And this is happening Tuesday, February 27th. You can sign up and you can hear. I, again, I know for a fact that anything Menachem and Dwayne do are going to be fantastic. You will learn a ton from this. And then I'm like, well, what is another article they had there? And James Clark had an article called When to Use 404s for SEO. And James has a slew of information on 404s, mm -hmm. what they are, what the soft 404 errors are, what 410 errors are, um, why you can use for or how you can use 404 errors to help with your SEO and not serve up these soft 404s, um, examples, what to do when page name, uh, page has been changed, if the page has been deleted. It's everything you need to know about 404s. And you could just take this and you just send it to your client and be like, look, this is why. Go, listen, follow this. Wix.com, Wix.com, Wix.com. But then I'm like, oh, there's another article talking about the fact that they now integrate Microsoft Clarity into Wix. And Microsoft Clarity is free. You can go around and see everybody's rage clicks. And now it fits right in with the Wix Microsoft Clarity integration. I'm like, all three of these are good. I can't choose just one. I'm not going to do it. It's all <laughs> phenomenal. And if you want to go find more stuff out, you can go do it. It's wix.com forward slash SEO forward slash learn. And there is everything that you want to know in there and more. And there's Morty and Crystal. I didn't even talk about the podcast. So if you <laughs> are looking for information, if you want to get better, it's wix.com, wix.com, wix.com forward slash SEO forward slash learn. All right. And into the news this week, I saw a great thread on X from Glenn Gabe at Glenn Gabe. And they're talking about some changes that happened in notes. And when Google's notes came out, that's what you can leave a note about a certain uh, result in the search engine results pages. We had that like, who's going to write a note before they go somewhere? How is this going to work? Shouldn't this be like a Chrome thing, not like a search engine thing? And it seems like there are some changes that are coming here. Glenn says, heads up, a big notes update from Google. Many have wondered who would actually add a note before reading an article. Well, now we have Google commenting system on our sites. As of yesterday, I'm seeing add note show up in SGE while browsing. And the example that you can see pops up is it looks like before or once somebody clicks on through the article, it seems like, because it looks like he's looking at earning call, you can see any of the notes on search and you can add a note right there while you're on the page itself. You don't have to go back to Google okay. to add the note. So that's one change that seems like. Also, there is a way to block Google extended, which will block barred. There is no way, apparently, according to Glenn Gabe, that you can block SGE. So he says... This does not stop, and this is blocking that Google extended their block bar. He says that does not stop SGE from using the content, only barred in other AI systems. SGE is a search feature, so you can't block it via Google extended. But checking several sites that do block it, I'm not seeing notes show up in SGE while browsing. Again, it's an interesting side note, as we all have a Google commenting system on our sites now. Stay tuned, and that's the notes. So he also went on to explain, he said, adding to my thread about notes in SGE while browsing, when Help Me Write arrives in Chrome next month, Google will be pushing for people to add notes to articles across the web and also provide AI assistance for writing those notes. We talked about that last week, that you might see more leads come through with this AI form-filling solution that's going to be rolling out to Chrome. And you might see AI notes on websites too. It's like, there's just so much going on. And that's like the last thing you want. It's like AI-driven mm -hmm. notes on a search engine result page. And then he finished this off by saying, and one more note about this pun intended. Thank you much, Glenn. Nice work. This change will also expose current notes to many more people. When you visit a page that has notes already and you use SG while browsing, the add note button is there, but also the current notes for the page. And this is a look where you can see when you're on that page, it pops up and it says notes on search and there's people talking about this web page and it shows you the notes that are on the page itself. It does make sense if there is a system in place because the problem is if there's no moderation, if there's no way 
Right. These things are going to get spammed to oblivion. You're going to be able to go on Fiverr and leave as many bad reviews about a certain search engine um, result, and it's going to be full of spam. And we know one thing about Google Help. It is not necessarily that helpful. Yo, what help? And there is a new clippable feature for product snippets, uh, according to the incredibly fast talker, Barry Schwartz. He writes, Brody Clark, with much confidence on X, that this feature is live in the U.S. He wrote, Google has now launched discount rich results for organic listings in the U.S. The new rich result type makes your snippet longer, allowing shoppers to copy coupon codes directly from the search results. There's an example of saving 25 I don't know if that's $25 or if that's 25%. It'd be nice if you knew what you were clipping, but it is kind of cool that it's right there in the SERPs, you know, from that rich data. Also, just something else to be aware of is I hadn't really thought of this before. Um, Brittany Mueller at Brittany Mueller on X said, hey, Moe's, curious if the people on your homepage are AI generated. If so, why? And then the incredibly fast talker, Barry Schwartz, said, curious, is there an issue for using AI generated images versus stock images? And that, I kind of thought the same thing, like whatever. And then Brittany said, this will be something we have to figure out as an industry. And I believe she's kind of on the AI side, so that's the AI industry. It's not the SEO industry. And she says, my personal opinion, generative AI images for educational purposes, creative endeavors, and personal hobby reasons equals check. And then she says, generated AI images that misrepresent real people, especially those of a minority background, fake news, mimic copyright material, unethical or illegal imagery, et cetera, is a no. This is what the whole SAG strike was about. The actors don't want to get replaced with AI. And I assume that those marketing bros and the stock images feel the same way. They need work. Yeah. I, yeah. I I could see it either way. But if you're using AI generated people, just know some people are going to be upset that it's not a real. I mean, I think you're also going to probably be upset about stock too, right? If you don't have those real people actually that are advocates just something that people may be sensitive about. So, mm -hmm. and it's also one of those things too, where if you pay for four hours of time for a photographer to have somebody come in and shoot your own stock photos, that always looks better. Always. So do that. All right. And this was a wild one from an SGE response. Somebody had typed in best movies of all time. Um, it might've been Garrett Sussman. And the answer said, some consider Godfather 1972 to be the best movie of all time. According to a Reddit user, and so then Lily Ray said, according to a Reddit user, I am dead. <laughs> so is that what SG is going to do? It's going to be like, whoa, you know, yeah. just going to pull just out from, from anything. Yeah. He'd be like, Noseboogers69 said that Godfather was a 5.5. <laughs> like, okay, that's according to a Reddit user. Yeah. You shouldn't use a Reddit user to be the definition oh. of your search of, of the results. Maybe it was, uh, what's the guy, Roger Ebert or whatever? Cisco <laughs> maybe, Ebert? Maybe he's the guy on Reddit. What's the guy's name? That's his handle, Nosebooger69. <laughs> I think he would pick something better. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, Roger Ebert. <laughs> he's on Reddit. Is he alive? No, him and Cisco are dead. Really? Oh, man. Yeah. Rest Who's reviewing peace. films now? This Reddit user? It's just that. One, yeah. It's just I that, know, wonder we need the ready user. The only person reviewing films is the worst reviewer ever. Every time you see somebody that's like a quote from Peter Travers in a screening, Peter Travers has no taste in movies. And it's like the only quote you see. Be like, Who is he? You'd be like, oh, uh, leave the world behind. Oh. oh, it's an epic, an epic landfall win for moviegoers everywhere. Peter Travers. That. I did not watch that film. I watched the trailer on Netflix, and it's just like a piece of a scene oh, where a ship is coming for them. It was awful. Oh, I know so you good. said it was awful. It's terrible. I know, but it, I could feel the terrible, and I didn't even want to get into it. I almost did. Okay. Well, there is also another secret that Joe Youngblood has uncovered, and he says, Google is dramatically reducing the number of assessments in reCAPTCHA's free version from 1 million a month to just 10,000 per month. If you're using this in a high traffic app, Google will start automatically charging you in April. Yet another cash grab by Mountain View, though it does seem less expensive than the work suite grab last year. So if you're using reCAPTCHA, if you're using more than 10,000, anything on top of that a month is going to be built. I should stop doing these for fun then because people are going to get charged for my enjoyment. That's not why you should stop, but <laughs> I agree you should stop. <laughs> 
All right. There was another great article from Nicole Agus on Search Engine Land talking about the fact that Google advertisers are confused between support and sales. So we asked for clarification. I don't really get a lot of clarification. There is no support and there is sales. Yeah. That's really all you need to know. We asked. We didn't receive clarification. I mean, I, a, a lot of people made some good points by saying that the email signatures that come from a Google address, by the way, never mention sales or other solutions or account management, um, although many people are paid based off performance and things like that from from what we hear. And uh, Anthony Higman Higman is in there as well. So if you're interested to try to get to the bottom of sales and uh, support, Shop already nailed it for you, but there you go. Okay, and from Morty Oberstein, there is a poll that he put out saying, does Google consistently and regularly rank AI content? And the choices are yes or no. And yes was the winner <laughs> of eight by 82.6%. So it does seem that folks believe that Google is ranking AI con- uh, content consistently. And that's it in organic, what's happening in social bud. All right, first off this week, if you want to have an entire grid on Instagram just for a specific group of friends, you may soon be able to do so. Instagram is testing a new feature that they're calling Flipside, which you can assign to a a designated group of users, which is different from the close friends list that you can filter content for otherwise. One other thing, Shep. Um, (laughs) Sorry, we're in the social (laughs) round. I want to talk. I haven't talked to you all day. Okay. Uh, um, Have you seen Escaping Twin Flames on Netflix yet? Have you seen Escaping Twin Flames on Netflix? No. Um, I was horrified. I don't want to be too mean, but there comes a point when it's like, is it a cult or are it a bunch of losers just to, like on the same <laughs> Zoom call? I just watched. Jess, it was crazy. Should I watch this? What is it? It's you just a watch bunch of people who I mean, can't I accept that they got dumped and it let is, their lives be taken away. It's terrible. I highly recommend that you watch Escaping Twin Flames on Netflix. It's, it's only three episodes. The cult leader guy is like one of the top five worst people I've ever encountered in my life. How could anybody follow that man? He's such he a loser. He is like abusive. He is just a loser. Yeah. That's what we're thinking about doing roster offices, coming up with a cult. Okay. Yeah, But like a good one. Will you serve Kool-Aid? No! All right, what's next in social justice? It's really, I don't have anything better than that. So if you want to have that Zoom call um, about your cult following, if you want to do it on Spaces, we teased this before. Um, there's going to be video capabilities for that on X. This is not exciting at all, but they have shared a preview of what the enable video toggle button looks like. It is a very slow news week here for social. Um, they're also testing adding a dedicated media tab um, in the bottom there. So again, pushing video. I like this. Like we could have spaces about that and you could have PPC chat and it could be still there on X and you can have video and we could talk about escaping twin flames. Okay. I dig it. Sure. And you could use this beautiful toggle button. It is. But the the news is not that the feature is coming. We already reported that. Now they're just showing us the button and we still don't have a date. I like the button too. It's one nice button. It is a nice button. It matches the other button I put in there. They're working really hard. Y'all talked about Mr. Beast last week, right? Reported on his results. Yes. Did you talk about the fact that it was a farce kind of? So apparently the Mr. Beast clip made more money than it would have otherwise i know he had some theories as to why which you guys talked about last week but x admitted that basically they enrolled mr beast into its amplify video promotion offering which no other creator can utilize and it was like an experiment and he was an initial partner so they kind of inflated the results there for him essentially which worked it got a lot of attention um that's fine but the news this week is that apparently this amplify program is going to be expanded now to all creators. There's obviously a list of requirements. If you want to qualify for the program, there should be. Um, But again, it was a test that they were kind of not really honest about, but now it is going to go wider. Um, The experiment worked. I don't think anyone should expect to make as much money as he did, but you wouldn't on YouTube either, and you might still use YouTube. So again, got him a lot of attention, got the test a lot of attention, and they're now expanding that Amplify program to all creators. Tables, did we make that much money when we uploaded our video? I think, he, what do he make, uh, a quarter million? Which video? Uh, we did one in December. Not even close. No, okay. You make a quarter of a dollar? Hey, tables, can you get Perhaps. an Amplify video promotion offering for me? 
I'll look into it. Thanks. You yeah. should submit that Zoom episode we just recorded. It was really good. <laughs> Top notch content. <laughs> we'll owe we'll owe X money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a new study from YouGov is showing how important social media is, particularly for young people staying informed. We've talked about this before. It is true. Um, people are getting their news from social, basically, is the TLDR. Um, Americans under 34, for Americans under 34, social has surpassed traditional television as their top news source. Um from a marketing standpoint, obviously, we know that social is not going anywhere. But if you want to look at how messaging apps and social platforms are utilized by generation, there are some good charts um, in the study that came along with that little bit about the news. So you can get the link in all the places you get the links. Pick your poison, Shep would say. <laughs> Last up in social this week, TikTok is zigging or zoning, where others are zagging. They're apparently pushing creators towards horizontal content. I repeat, uh, horizontal. Yeah, the TV app is coming. Is it? is it? It must be. It must be. But when I say pushing, they, there's a screenshot that somebody shared that I will shep my vision here. Post videos over one minute in landscape to get increased views. The number of boosted views may change based on many factors, yada, yada. Basically, if you post a video that's longer than one minute and it's in landscape, a um, couple other qualifications here, but you could be eligible for like a boost and get more visibility because of it. So they're pushing horizontal, which to me suggests long form content, longer yeah. form content, because that's how people watch it. So now we know YouTube is going towards a one minute vertical <laughs> is their big push. Well, X is going after horizontal, longer form stuff, buying shows, making them exclusive. And now... TikTok is saying you get increased views if a fo if it's over one minute. Put it if it, you increase views if you go landscape. Yeah. Almost like long form stuff makes sense, and you shouldn't be taking your creators that absolutely love you and pushing them into a format that doesn't work for their content. And there was also another video by uh, Marcus Brownlee talking about all these people quitting YouTube and like breaking it all down. And there are so many creators that this year are like, I'm done with it. And then there's another thing I want to talk about, about YouTube too, where I forget the name of the podcast. I don't watch the podcast, but it's by that Mark Bell guy that had the, he took a bunch of steroids or something for a documentary. Oh, I forget is that why he called. looked like that? It sounds like something Very you would jacked. watch. Yeah. yeah. It's called Mark Bell's Power Project and he didn't have any strikes at all on his channel not a single one they had taken down one video at one point and his channel was removed from youtube and it's like yeah you're making it harder for people who have been doing the same thing year in and year out consistently building their audience now you're trying to make them do different stuff from vertical at any point you can rip the page away from pe people and it's it's, it's a, not a good spot i i would love to see a study looking at the like um, sentiment towards these different channels from creators because I feel like YouTube is dropping fast. Like I'm saying, I, all these people are trying to make me download their own apps because they don't want to do it on YouTube. I mean, and even Mr. Beast, right? Like I, yeah, I know that. that there was you know motivation there, but if he was super loyal to YouTube, he wouldn't have played with X. And why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he put this on TikTok? Why he wouldn't totally he take a video now. and yeah. put him on TikTok? Put it on X. He made two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, he was put in a special program. Guess what? He's gonna be putting in it again. And put it on TikTok. Get more audience. And TikTok is rewarding people for the landscape stuff, right. which is the complete opposite of YouTube. Yeah, which I don't think that reward will be going on forever, but they're definitely trying to get people to do this. And we know that they're testing 30-minute videos as well. So again, long form, horizontal form, it's the writings on the wall. And that brings us to our real life segment, straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for working hard or hardly working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. I have complained about phrase match and Microsoft ads in the past, and I just wanna say in all fairness that it's working for me now in one account. I have it optimized for SQLs on eCPC. I don't know if that's part of it. But I have my campaign separated out by phrase and exact, and I thought the exact ones were going to do a lot better than the phrase match ones are. So just for what it's worth. Greg? Um, I'm going to go with just our team working hard this week. We had a bunch of members shoot down to New York City to go talk to a client. And from everything I heard, they killed it. Did a great job. 
awesome job. And they were really, Jill was there from the agency scoop fame, but like nobody else was. And they absolutely killed it. This is awesome when you see people stepping up, being able to handle stuff and just doing a phenomenal job. And it's just so appreciated. Yeah, it really is. And that coincides with my working hard as well, because that meeting was, again, it was an in-person meeting. I wasn't able to go down personal reasons, but the point was to be in a room with a client that we've been all virtual with and have productive conversation. And the thing working hard for us was that we also needed to present a year end like recap deck. And through conversation with the client, we decided let's just move that to virtual earlier in the week so that when we're in the room, we can have these productive conversations and use all of our time for that. Um, And it really worked. A lot of insights came out of it. A lot of collaboration, great ideas. Like we have a plan moving forward. And it just thinking about using your time wisely, I guess, is is working very hard for us this week. And now for this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our cool tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. And is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is SEO Arcade, and these folks are not playing any games. Not a rhyme shop, but a pun. In their words, we discover relevant keywords, you give us conversion rate and revenue, and we predict your SEO market potential, end quote. So this tool goes beyond traffic estimates and uses your keyword list to calculate potential leads and revenue. If you were to rank for said keywords in certain positions, it can help you expand on your keyword list, do more keyword research, um, ROI forecasting, visualizations, and a whole lot more. So no, it's not free, but it's $70 a month. If you're not happy with your current tool set or manual process, it's definitely worth exploring. So again, that's SEO Arcade. And as always, we will have the link in our newsletter as well as on Discord. That's newsletter dot and community dot marketing o'clock dot com, respectively. So pick your poison, pick your poison, pick your poison and check it out. Now it's time for our must read marketing article of the week, an article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from Brody Clark on BrodyClark.com, and it's called Google's Organic Product Grids, How Ranking Works. And Brody has an in-depth analysis that covers everything from which countries have product grids, a free template so you can perform analysis on your products, how ranking works, what are the most influential factors in ranking your product, maximizing visibility, some of the benefits you get by being in the top placement, some merchant features you should consider, uh, how to maintain parameters correctly, and then a bunch of FAQs. So if you have products and you're looking to get more of those free listings, this is a great source to check out. Thank you, Brody. If you are looking for this and more, newsletter.marketingclock.com or community.marketingclock.com. Thanks, Brody. And now onto our playlist of curated songs to work to. You can head over to playlist.marketingclock.com to listen to Marketing a Playlist. Jess, what will you be adding this week? I am going with V-A-N by Poppy and Bad Omens. And I will be adding Prologue from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by John Williams. Someone polishing that stone? I'm sorry. I Listen, John Williams is like one of my top five artists every year on Spotify Wrapped. I listen to a lot of musical scores. (laughs) Did you think uh, Hermione had the clip on nails? No way. (laughs) She has no time for that. How do you say her name? Hermione. 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 Greg, (laughs) what's your song? (laughs) I'm going to go with Staring at the Fire by Mike Posner. All right. That does it for today's show. It is now officially not marketing o'clock. Thanks for listening. We miss you already. We can't wait to see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. If you're looking for more information on today's topic, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we covered. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. Welcome to this week's Shooting the Hack. We're after our famous Friday news show. We don't talk about marketing anymore. We just... Shoot the hack. Greg, what are we doing here? I don't know if I did this last year, but <laughs> it's February. Winter is like nearly over. No and- way. Yeah, way. It's green outside. Valentine's Day is upon us. Oh, your favorite holiday. <laughs> yes. You're not a big Valentine's person? I don't think any of us are. What are you doing with your... Uh- 
sweetie here on Valentine's Day? Um, probably. Which sweetie? (laughs) 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 Probably staying in my house. Okay. How about you? Food, but not on that day. Okay. Too many people out being sweet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good excuse to go out to eat, though. All right. Well, we have some Valentine's related facts here, and it's trivia. Oh, so we love you trivia. are going to compete against each other for very important Valentine adjacent knowledge. Okay. Okay. First up, we ring in with our name. Yes, ring in with your name. How many times does your heart beat a day? Oh God! You're going to make minutes? me do math. Can we uh, use a calculator? No. Five thousand. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't ring in with your name, Jess. <laughs> That's not right. Five thousand and one. <laughs> hey, Jess is in a five thousand and one. Shep, are you like to go in? You got to ring in with your name. Okay. Five thousand and two. Okay. Mm. Tables. That wasn't fair. Did he not hear me answer first? Yeah, but you, you didn't, didn't ring, ring in with your name. name. Oh, I'm gonna strategy. Go with tw- uh, tables. Greg rang me in. Uh, I'm gonna go with twenty thousand. Absolutely love the game theory here. You got 5,001, you got 5,002, and you're going to 20,000. And tables, you win it. It's 115,000 times a day. That's a lot of times. All right, because you all love math. How many gallons of blood does your heart pump a day? Ooh. Gallons of blood. Jess. Jess. 40. 40 gallons. Shep. Shep. It's probably way higher than that. Shep, go really 39 high. and a half. <laughs> It's got to be way higher than that. Tables. <laughs> love it. Tables. <laughs> tables. I love. You must be great at like board games. <laughs> Is it 39 and a half? We have 40. We have 100. You didn't know 40 and a half would have worked the same exact amount, tables. Uh, 2,000 gallons. Tables, you win again. It has to be right. Tables, you win again. Okay. <laughs> What year was the first open heart surgery performed? What? These are not Valentine's facts. These are good facts, though. Jess. Tables. Uh, Jess is in first. 1894. Okay, tables. Did the person survive? I don't know if I have that fact. Okay. (laughs) 1958. Okay. You were in the 1800s? 1894. 1901. Jess wins it. It was actually 1893. It what? was performed by Daniel Hale Williams, who was one of the first few black cardiologists in the United States at the time. I was one year off. It was just pure guessing. One year off. I'm okay. so impressed. Tables two. Jess won. Shep. <laughs> ah, zero. <laughs> All right. What year was the first implantable pacemaker installed? Shep. Shep. 1952. Y'all want to take a guess or no? Jess. Jess. 1953. <laughs> Tables. So what are you going to go with? 2025? He's making it more fun. <laughs> I'm going to go with 1985. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jess won. It's 1958. Woo! I was pretty close. Me too. <laughs> Arnie Larson, who received the pacemaker, actually lived longer than the surgeon who implanted it. Larson d- died at the age of 86 of a disease that was unrelated to his heart. That's awesome. Nice. It really nice thing he's supposed to do. Yeah. I love that for him. Okay. The mammal with the fastest heartbeat is the, it might be a vermin to you. It might be vermin family. It's the American pygmy shrew. It has the fastest heartbeat. How many beats per minute does the American I don't pygmy know. shrew have? Jess. Jess. 200. Shep. Shep. 199. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for this table. You call it gameplay. Whatever. Game I'm going to go with 201. What? <laughs> Who is that man over there? Is I wanted right? to hear his real guess. Yeah. What was your real guess? 202. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. It was 1,200 beats per minute. I'm getting that in a day. Oh. Okay. So tables has three. <sighs> Jess has two. Shep. It's like sandstorm. <laughs> okay, we'll go with one one last one here. There is one animal with their left ventricle being thicker than the right because it needs to pump more blood to a different part of them. What animal has a lopsided heart, lopsided, oversized left ventricle? Shep. Closest animal wins. I judge animal closely. Shep. Shep. An elephant. Okay. 
Uh, Jess. Jess. Turkey. Turkey, okay. <laughs> so much blood gets into that gobbler. You ever cut open a turkey gobbler? Yeah. <laughs> blood blood everywhere. everywhere. It's like Nicole's neighborhood. I'm going to say a llama. <laughs> okay. I'm giving this to tables. Yeah. It is a giraffe. The left <gasps> ventricle has to pump its blood all the way up to the brain. And because of that big distance, that's why it's lopsided. Because it's got to so shoot sense. it all the way up to the brain. That's not a llama. A llama is closer than an elephant to a giraffe. Whatever. If I, I don't have to know look at the if phylum I agree with that. of the things, the llamas are closer. Okay. Well, I think I had a pretty good guess. Well, either way, Tables has won the Valentine's Day trivia. How's that game theory? Well, it's just because I... It's He's doing great. It's because he took my game theory. <laughs> so tables with four, Jess with two. Shep, how many did you have again? Zero. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for playing, everybody. We will see you next week. You know what time it is. It's officially marketing o'clock. Settle in, sit back, keep it locked.